concept, chapter two, functional ability. Definitions. Health is seen as a level of functional ability for an individual's mind and body. Historically, to be considered in good health meant that an individual is free from injury, disability, illness, or pain. A challenge to this view occurred when the World Health Organization, abbreviated WHO, broadened the definition of health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Expanding and refining the definition of what is considered good health or healthy is a paradigm shift that is inclusive and more representative of the human population, especially those individuals with disabilities or chronic health conditions. The expanded view of health as it relates to functional ability is supported by one of the four overarching goals of Healthy People 2020, to promote quality of life, healthy development, and healthy behaviors across all life stages. A key factor in quality of life and therefore in health is an individual's ability to function. This view is further supported by the Institute of Medicine reporting Crossing the Quality Chasm, a new health system for the 21st century, which emphasizes that a goal of the U.S. healthcare system is to, quote, to improve the health and functioning of the people of the United States. Thus, the concept, unquote, thus the concept of functional ability has implications for collaborative health care across all populations and settings. Functional ability refers to the individual's ability to perform the normal daily activities required to meet basic needs, fulfill usual roles in the family, workplace, and community, and maintain health and well-being. Specifically, it reflects the adaptive dimension of development, which is concerned with the acquisition of range of skills that enable independence in the home and in the community. For the purposes of this concept analysis, functional ability is defined as the cognitive, social, physical, and emotional ability to carry on the normal activities of life. Functional ability may differ from functional performance, which refers to the actual daily activities carried out by an individual. Functional impairment and disability refers to varying degrees of an individual's inability to perform the tasks required to complete normal life and activities without assistance. Scope and categories. On the broadest and simplest level, the scope of functional ability represents a continuum from full function to disability. This similar, simple linear perspective is useful to acknowledge that a functional ability is a continuum that varies from person to person and within the same person at different points in time. However, the interaction between the health of an individual and disability is a complex process that is influenced by developmental and biological factors, including current state of health, as well as by psychological, sociocultural, environmental, and politico-economic factors. Within the conceptual framework known as the disablement process, the term function refers to the positive or neutral interaction between a person's health condition and ability to perform social or physical activities. At the other end of the spectrum, disability refers to the negative aspects to a person's health condition and social or physical limitation. Impairment refers to the physical abnormality that underlies these limitations and is caused by some type of disease process. The scope of conceptualizing function as a complex process that changes based on lifespan, health, and environment is essential to nursing care and assessment across the entire life course from birth to death. Lifespan considerations. Functional ability changes across the lifespan as a function of development occurring predominantly during the infant, toddler, preschool, 
school age, adolescent, and young adult developmental stages. Although the changes in environment, lifestyle, and technology require some continued development of functional skills across the entire lifespan. In infants and young children, expected development of functional ability is indicated by the achievement of developmental milestones. Specialized age-appropriate tests of development are used when indicated to determine developmental delays during young and middle adulthood identification of problems with functional ability requires careful assessment of each developmental milestone. For older adults, functional status ordinarily refers to the safe, effective performance of activities of daily living, ADLs, essential for independent living. For this age group, intentional screening focused on factors known to contribute to a decline in functional ability is essential. A comprehensive interprof interprofessional assessment focused on observed functional, social, or cognitive changes should be performed on all individuals not exclusive of environment in institutions or community dwellings or disease state. Attributes and criteria. Functional ability has two dimensions, attributes and ante antecedents. Attributes are defining characteristics of functional ability, and antecedents are events that must happen before functional ability can exist. Attributes of, of functional capacity include the following. The capacity to perform specific functional abilities, the actual or required performance of functional abilities. Antecedents of functional capacity include the following. Development of physiologic process, neural, endocrine, musculoskeletal, and metabolic. Acquisition of developmental life milestones and skills. At any given time, an individual with the capacity to perform a self-care activity may not complete that activity because of developmental, cultural, environmental, or social factors. Functional ability is further characterized by gradations of capacity or performance. It is not simply a matter of whether the individual can or does perform the activity, but instead under what circumstances, with what type and amount of assistance, and at what length of time and with what degree of effort the person can or does perform the activity. All aspects of this concept presentation are based on these attribute and antecedent principles. Links to theory. Functional ability is important across the life course because it is a major contributing factor to quality of life. It allows independence and participation in activities that are fulfilling to human nature. Functional ability is also important to healthcare providers and healthcare financiers because it can indicate the existence and severity of disease, signal the need for services, monitor success of treatment and disease progression, and facilitate cost effectiveness in the provision of care. Several theories can be used to translate the complex interaction and dynamic process of functional ability across the life course. A model of nursing with the concept of functional ability as a cornerstone is the Roper, Logan, Tierney model of nursing. According to this model, 12 activities of daily living are central to human life. This model was developed in Edinburgh and is used throughout Europe as well as in many other areas of the world to guide nursing education and practice by providing a framework to organize and individualize care. It has a focus on health rather than illness and promotes care directed toward health promotion and wellness. Ongoing patient assessment and facilitation of independence in the patient's normal activities of living are central to the model. The activities of daily living according to the Roper Logan Turney model of nursing are maintaining a safe environment, breathing, communication, mobilizing, eating and drinking, eliminating, personal cleansing and dressing, 
maintaining body temperature, working and playing, sleeping, expressing sexuality, and dying. The International Classification of Functioning, Disability, and Health, called ICF, is a framework created by the World Health Organization to describe this dynamic process that occurs between functional ability and disability. The ICF focuses on the changes in functional level. These may be temporary, such as recovering from an illness or injury, or long-term, such as a spinal cord injury. The ICF highlights the complex interactions of environment and personal factors and the effect they have on the domains of the body function, activity, and the person's ability to participate in hobbies, sports, work, shopping, and driving. This criteria is used in the featured exemplars discussed later to illustrate the complex dynamic process of impairment or limitation in functional ability for certain health conditions. Context to nursing and healthcare. Nursing practice has three major dimensions of concern relative to an individual's functional ability. One, risk recognition. Two, functional assessment. And three, planning and delivery of individualized care appropriate to level of functional ability. Functional ability is a complex concept that represents the interaction of the physical, psychological, cognitive, and social domains of the human person. Alterations in functional ability occur as primary or secondary problems. Primary problems are those in which the ability to perform a particular function never developed. Secondary problems, on the other hand, occur after functional ability has been attained. Thus, secondary problems represent a loss of functional ability. Two examples of functional ability are the basic activities of daily living called BADLs or ADLs and the instrument activities of daily living, IADLs. The BADLs relate to personal care and mobility and include eating as well as hygienic and grooming activities such as bathing, mouth care, dressing, and toileting. IADLs are more complex skills that are essential to living in the community. Examples of IADLs are managing money, grocery shopping, cooking, house cleaning, doing laundry, taking medicine, using the telephone, and accessing transportation. BADLs and IADLs are essential to independent living. Functional ability is a critical consideration in virtual, virtually all areas of healthcare and to all members of the healthcare team representing interprofessional interest. It is a critical element in discharge planning from healthcare facilities. Successful transition is dependent on the functional level in combination with supportive services such as home health care, inpatient or outpatient rehab services, or placement in a long-term care facility. In the rehab setting, the focus is on restoring functional ability and evaluating the functional outcomes of treatment by means of a functional assessment. For long-term care services, functional impairment, defined as needing assistance with a minimum of two or three ADLs, is a common eligibility criterion. Risk recognition. <clears throat> Risk recognition is essential to the early identification of factors that affect function. Actual functional deficiencies lead to subsequent mobilization of resources and support to enhance functional ability. The early identification is critical to the health status of individuals because research has shown that functional deficits are associated with poor health outcomes, whereas good functional ability is associated with positive outcomes. For example, a study of stroke patients revealed that major predictors of independence five months after stroke were independent living status and independent in ADLs. There are multiple risk factors for impaired functional ability because of the multiple variables that impact function, including developmental abnormalities, physical or psychological trauma or disease, social and cultural factors, including beliefs, and perceptions of health and physical environment, research has repeatedly documented age, 
cognitive function, and level of depression as risk factors for and predictors of functional impairment. Comorbidities and socioeconomic factors have also been implicated. Preclinical disability, defined as task modification without report of difficulty in performing a specific activity, has also been found to be an important predictor of future fun functional decline and disability in the elderly. In a study of postpartum women, those with postpartum depression were 12 times less likely to achieve pre-pregnancy functional levels than those without postpartum depression. Postpartum depression predicted lower personal, household, and social functioning, but without deficit in infant care. Sudden onset of functional decline is often indicative of acute illness or worsening of a chronic disease. Risk reduction should be the focus of care for patients with identified risks. Teaching patients and families about factors associated with maintenance of high-level functional ability is required. These factors include well-balanced nutrition, physical activity, routine health checkups, stress management, regular participation in meaningful activity, and avoidance of tobacco and other substances associated with abuse. In addition, patients need teaching and guidance to develop effective action plans designed to decrease their specific risks. Finally, ongoing assessment of an individual's functional ability can provide continual adjustment of recourses in order to maximize independence rather than dependence. Functional assessment. Comprehensive functional assessment is a time-intensive interprofessional effort requiring use of multiple assessment tools. Comprehensive functional assessment is indicated under specific circumstances. Children who are delayed in meeting developmental milestones and accomplishing developmental tasks are referred for assessment across domains of, developmental, of development, including that of adaptive behavior, which is analogous to functional ability. Comprehensive assessment of functional ability in older adults is indicated when the individual has demonstrated a loss of functional ability, has experienced a change in mental status, has multiple health conditions, or is a frail elderly person living in the community. Screening for functional deficits in older adults should be a part of routine care, just as screening for meeting developmental milestones is for children. An individual's performance of activities of daily living is basic to functional assessment. ADLs as indicators of functional ability evolved in the late 1950s with the identification of a group of basic physical activities, the performance of which was to be used to evaluate the success of rehabilitation programs. A decade later, IADLs were identified as indicators of ability to live independently in the community. This led to the use of ADLs as a measure of need and eligibility for long-term care and other support services and to the development of an array of assessment tools. Assessment tools. The two basic types of assessment tools are self-report and performance-based. Self-report tools provide information about the patient's perception of functional ability, whereas performance-based tools involve actual observation of a standardized task, completion of which is judged by objective criteria. Performance-based assessments are preferred because they avoid potential for inaccurate measurement inherent in self-report. They also can measure functional ability with repetition and with consideration of time on task. Potential problems with self-report measures of functional activity stem from the effect of an individual's personal characteristics and preferences, as well as environmental factors. Interpretation of what is meant by the question can vary from person to person. Even when vocabulary is correctly understood, the phrasing of the question can lead to an ambiguous response. For example, if a patient 
is asked, can you, the answer is based on the person's perception of his or her ability to perform the task, not necessarily on actual ability. Thus, overstatements of ability may occur because of a lack of awareness that gradual changes in ability have occurred. Understatements of ability are possible when an individual has not attempted to perform the activity in question because of culture or preference or mistakenly believes that he or she is unable to perform the task. Ability can be overreported or underreported by individuals based on personal reasons. Pride and the desire to be seen as self-sufficient, fear of losing independence, and fear of long-term care placement are common reasons for overstatement of ability, especially among elders. Meaningful measurement of functional ability also has to address the areas of dependency and difficulty. Dependency refers to the amount of assistance needed to function, whether it involves the assistance of an adaptive, adaptive device or another person. No assistance, partial assistance, or total assistance are examples of common options related to dependency used when scoring functional assessment tools. Common scoring options related to difficulty are some, a lot, or unable to perform. In addition to functional assessment tools that focus on complex, multidimensional abilities such as ADLs, there are tools designed to assess a specific area of function, such as mental status, mobility status, or hand function. There are also tools designed for use with specific populations and age groups. There are examples in the book on page 16 in concepts of the wide variety of functional assessment tools. This presents questions and observations associated with functional assessments. Guide to functional assessment screening. Functional assessment component such as vision, Sample questions. Do you have any difficulty seeing? Do you wear glasses or contact lens? Do you use any special equipment to help you see, such as a high-intensity light or magnifying glass? When was your last eye exam? Nurses' observations and examinations. Observe for signs of impaired vision during interaction with patient. Turning head to one side in an effort to see better. Non-applicable comments about room seeming dark feeling for items, have patient hold a magazine or newspaper and read a line of print, have patient read a wall clock or sign at a distance. Hearing. Do you have difficulty hearing? Does anyone tell you that you are hard of hearing? Do you have to ask people to repeat what they say? Can you hear well in crowds? Can you hear when the area is noisy? Observations by the nurse. Note patient's apparent hearing during your interaction with him or her. Rub your thumb and forefinger together in front of each of the patient's ears. The patient should easily hear the sound. Mobility assessment. Questions. Do you have any trouble moving? Do you feel steady when you walk? Do you use anything to help you walk? Do you have trouble getting out of bed? Do you have difficulty sitting down or standing up? Observations and examinations by the nurse. Observe patient's general movements. Look for obvious limitation of movement in any body part. Have patients put hands together behind neck and then behind waist to assess external and internal rotation of the shoulder. Assess lower extremity function, balance, and gait by asking patient to arise from a straight back chair, stand still, walk across the room approximately 10 feet, turn, walk back, and sit down. Note ability to stand up and sit down, balance when sitting, standing, and walking, gait, and ability to turn. Fall history. Questions. Have you had any falls? Have you had any near falls? Do you take any precautions against falling? Continence. Questions. Do you ever lose control of your bowels? Do you ever lose control of your urine and wet yourself? Do you wear any type of protective pad or underclothes in case of an accident with urine or bowels? Nutrition. Have you gained or lost 10 pounds in the last six months without trying? What do you typically eat in a day? Do you have difficulty chewing or swallowing? When was your last dental visit? Nurses 
examination and observation. Note general appearance as related to nutritional status. Well nourished, undernourished, emaciated, obtain weight and determine body mass index. Cognition. Do you have any trouble with your memory? Note patient's ability to respond appropriately to questions and directions. Three item recall at one minute. If patient fails this test, follow with MMSE, which is another form of assessment. Affect. Do you often feel anxious or overstressed? Do you often feel sad or down? Note patient's expression and if this matches their mood. Home environment. Who do you live with? What type of house do you have? Single home, multiple family, apartment? How many floors does the home have? Are there stairs you must use? Social participation. What keeps you busy all day? How often do you go out? How often do you have company? ADLs, basic and instrumental. Use a reliable, valid assessment tool to assess function related to grooming, toileting, dressing, eating, walking, shopping, meal preparation, housekeeping, travel, driving, and money management. Care delivery. Knowledge of an individual's functional level in the physical, social, emotional, cognitive, and communication dimensions is essential to planning and implementing effective patient care. Functional level determines the patient's need for assistance, as well as the type and amount of assistance required. It guides the nurse in helping with activities while ensuring use of adaptive equipment and maximizing the patient's independent function. The goal, of optim the goal is optimal independent function along with prevention of functional decline is essential to the improvement of health-related quality of life, which as an outcome of care is an objective for individuals of all ages with chronic illness or disability. Management of functional activity impairment involves a multidisciplinary effort. Early intervention can include one or more of the following services, nursing, medicine, physical therapy, occupational therapy, psychological intervention, individual and or family counseling, nutritional consulting, speech and language services, audiology services, home health or homemaker assistance, community services such as the daycare, support groups, and assistive technologies. When functional activity is impaired, early intervention is critical because in general, the earlier the intervention, the better the outcome. Care delivery purpose is to maintain optimal independent function and prevent functional decline for health related quality of life. It reduces risks. It needs to have early deten detection and screening and management of function activity impairment involving multidisciplinary interventions. Interrelated concepts, reducing risks. The human person is a complex, integrated whole that is greater than the sum of its parts. It follows, therefore, that concepts used to describe aspects of the human person represent interrelated rather than isolated phenomena. The strength and direction of the impact of one conceptual phenomena on another vary with the central concept under consideration. Because functional ability depends on the interplay of multiple elements within the physical, psychological, social, and cognitive dimensions, and because it allows for purposeful interaction with the environment, a multitude of concepts can be identified as influencing or, and or being influenced by it. Concepts representing major influencing factors and hence determinants of functional ability are development, cognition, and culture. With its unique variations in practices and expectations. Family dynamics and coping, as well as the physiologically focused concepts of mobility, nutrition, sensory perception, gas exchange, and perfusion, have a clearly reciprocal relationship with functional ability. 
these concepts surround either side of the concept with double-headed arrows because of their mutual interaction with it. The concepts of elimination and sexuality are shown at the bottom of the figure in the book in Concepts, page 18, with arrows pointing from functional ability to them because of the primarily unidirectional relationship of these concepts. Nursing interventions to manage functional impairment. To assess self-care assistance for BADLs and IADLs, such as dressing, toileting, bathing, ambulating, shopping, cooking, and eating. Fall prevention, exercise therapy, and teaching safe use of, of assistive devices. Featured exemplars. Alterations in functional ability. Question. What are the three dimensions of nursing care related to functional ability? Is it one, risk, recognition, functional assessment, and communication? Is it two, risk, recognition, functional assessment, and individualized care planning? Is it three, functional assessment, personal hygiene, and communication? Is it four, functional assessment, communication, and individualized care planning? The answer to this one is risk recognition number two, functional assessment, and individualized care planning. Question two, which functional assessment tool would be considered objective? A self-report number one, a patient survey number two, three, performance-based, or four, patient questionnaire? Again, which functional assessment tool would be considered objective? And your answer should be number three, which is performance-based. That is an objective assessment. Self-report, patient survey, and patient questionnaire are all subjective reporting. And this is the end of the slideshow.